Good morning. So I've got a fun one I want to test out today. One of the things I've been wondering is I see all different types of tunes as I'm poking around. Some where they like to have the advanced curve as you give it full throttle off an idle. Um, basically right where it was at idle. Some where they advance it a bit more, some where they retard it kind of like a distributor. So I kind of wanted to take a moment, play around with my car and test out which one actually works better. So what I'm going to do is I just got up, I'm on my way to work. I stopped by a gas station really, really quick and thought, you know what, I want to test that out. So I've got my laptop with me. It's set up and uh, I'll go ahead and get that up and running. But at first I want to get the car up to temperature. It's been a little while since I've shown you where my tune's at currently, how it accelerates. So let's have some fun. That's a pretty good one. So here is my plan. I'm going to go through and I'm going to set up the timing in the little area that I have highlighted here, which will be basically at full throttle with no boost right off of idle. And I'm going to do a few cells around it and uh, we're going to see how much by using data logs to see how much RPM increases during that period of time, compare it with each other as I go through the each incremental incremental. Uh, changes as I go through the spark timing. I'm going to do it in increments of five and I'm going to basically start at about eight and go all the way up to pretty close to 40. I don't really want to go over 40 because I think diminishing returns will happen at some point, but let's see how she does. Woohoo! So now I have all my data and you can kind of see how it sped up and uh, felt a lot better than with that really eight degrees of timing that was there at the very beginning. So now I'm going to take it to the next level. I'm going to put everything into a spreadsheet. I'm going to analyze it and uh, see if we can go from there. So this is actually really kind of cool and kind of fun. I did the test early this morning, uh, shortly after I took that video earlier this morning, and I wasn't happy with the results. It ended up not coming out to, to how I wanted the test to be. It was pretty unpredictable. And so I thought back of basically the scientific method of how could I make this consistent? So what I did is I went through and I started changing the values evenly and giving it a quick stab. I mean like a quarter of a second stab to the throttle to be able to control this and have it consistent. And I went through and I started plotting all the data points from when it was full throttle to off full throttle. And then I started calculating everything that was in there. And so you here you can see here's my uh, my attempt at uh, eight degrees of timing. Uh, this one was actually 13, I didn't go back far enough, but here's the one for eight. And you can kind of see right here, this is how it kind of plays into it. It actually went to nine, so I put nine in there. But uh, it was getting a little bit of influence from the sales, uh, sales a little bit higher and below it. But I went ahead and I did this and I plotted it for each and every single attempt I did and even multiple attempts. There's a few outliers that I found out um, due to lean issues and air fuel ratios. So I even took note of those so you can kind of see them in here. So here's what I plotted out. All right. So here's how it looks. You can see here's the, the degrees of timing. Here is ultimately the RPM per second, which is really what matters. And you'll notice that it, it increases kind of semi-steadily until it gets to about this range. 
and then it starts to decrease a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. So my car seems to really love around the 33 degrees of timing. And uh, you can tell the ones where I didn't have a small lean was the absolute fastest. I mean, uh, we're talking RPMs per second of about 4,400, which is actually quite impressive. And I could definitely tell it as I did the test. As I was down here in the lower RPMs, very similar to how a standard distributor would be, it did feel sluggish. Now, granted, this is on an engine free revving. This is not an engine under load. Um, uh, granted, it was going to zero kp or sorry to 100 kpa, but the engine is still not having a real viable load on it. Now, am I worried about putting a load on the engine at 33 degrees timing at very low RPM? Not too much, but I do have a hill near my house where I can test this out on my way home. So, hey, hey, test on my way home is coming. But this was very neat, and this is something that uh, I wanted to test out because in general, as I've been tuning my cars and doing other things like that, I would felt this. I knew that if I set up the timing to be low timing at this range, I could definitely feel it and everything there. But either way, so like the standard distributor, uh, any car that came from this area, my car's from the 70s, uh, what would happen is you had mechanical advances. The mechanical advances allowed the distributor to have a little weight in it. So as the RPM sped up, it would kick out those weights and it would in turn move the plate to advance the degrees of timing with the RPM respectively. These usually capped out at around 3,500, or another term would be all in at 3,500. So a lot of times you see a lot of these distributor spec sheets, it says 36 degrees of timing at 3,500. And really that's how it would work. It would ramp up from about eight degrees stock or, or um, static, and then go all the way up to 36 degrees of timing at 3,500, and it'd be a, a pretty linear curve in that regard, and then it would flatline and stay that way all the way red line. Very common. Okay. With uh, this case, what would happen is they would want the good gas mileage at idle and it to have that better drivability, so they put it on a vacuum advance. So you would have an extra 10, 15 degrees of idle or advance at idle, and then as soon as you peg the gas pedal, though, it would drop down to that lower timing, that static timing of like 8 degrees. And so that gave you kind of that standard feel. But with the modern type of uh, electronic ignition and, of course, the standalone ECU that we're using with Speedwino, you're not restricted by that. I can make anything I want. And so in theory, I kind of knew this was going to happen. And I knew it was going to be up in this range. That's why I kind of did the test all the way to 38. Uh, I didn't want to go too much farther than that. Uh, and I could feel it, too. Like, it felt so great to stab the throttle at about 33 degrees of timing. It, it responded very quickly. It was very happy. And so, uh, yeah, that was actually quite impressive. That made my day. Um, so this is something I'm going to incorporate. I kind of knew it ahead of time. Usually a lot of times what I see is people will do their idle timing all the way straight up the line. It looks kind of funny. Is it wrong? No, it's totally fine. But there is some room for improvement if you push it up. So if you have kind of a, a standard idle timing of around the, the low to mid 20s, um, you could advance it a couple more degrees and give that little bit quicker of a response. Like I said, I still, I've never pushed it that far. I've seen other people do it and I've always been curious about it. So that's why I wanted to try it out and uh, do a little bit of a test to get some actual data behind it. Uh, you can see here, I still have some tuning. So I've got kind of mid range. I've got some small areas that leaned out. So yes, could this spin in a little bit faster? Yeah, but it leaned out just a hair before it pocketed in there and, uh, and caught and kind of fired off correctly. So anyway, this is kind of a good starting part. So on my way home today, I'll probably have to test it on the hill. I'll put it at very low RPMs on first gear, and uh, I'll just kind of have it putting up a hill, and then I'll, I'll goose it. I'll see what happens. I'll see how it feels. The uh, thing I'm going to be looking for is making sure no backfire pops, anything like that that come through. Uh, just so you're aware, as I'm looking at the data log, this is what I would see when I'd call out. So this would be what I'd call a, a mid to a rich right there okay but if i go into another section let's say i come back here this would be where i'd call out a small lean and then to a kind of a small rich 
that's kind of how I was classifying, watching my air fuel ratio kind of dance around a little bit when I had these scenarios. And any time it went lean, it was obviously slower and it seemed to be an outlier from the ones around it. But anyway, I hope this helps. So these are some fun things which I'm gonna be doing kind of here in the near little future. I really wanna start diving in and not only just uh, doing some of the things that I've had learned over the years, but also trying to prove them. So this is one where I've kind of figured it out. I knew it was out there. Um, it was just a spark tune table that I, I wanted to set up that way. And so, uh, yeah, I'm kind of rambling. But anywho, if there's anything you're kind of curious about, you want me to test around, play with, or kind of see if I can develop and prove in some type of scientific method, I've got the junkyard block, so I might as well give it a shot. Anywho, uh, drop a line or a comment if uh, you have any questions. Take care. See you next time.